Right, muckers. So this week's video uh, is just a compilation of stuff I've been up to this week. Um, as I said, you know, uh, I asked you and you wanted to see some of the other things I get up to. Um, so, yeah, this is, well, this week in, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, really. Um, right, we'll start off with uh, something I bought a, a while back and I've only just had it uh, delivered. So, have a look at this. This, yeah, it's another Detroit. This is a 471. So you've seen my 671 at the other shop. This is a 471, so two cylinders shorter. That is basically it. Uh, all the other dimensions are basically the same. So uh, this came out of uh, an NCK crane, big track crane. And um, yeah, so it was a runner. Uh, and we haven't had it running yet. I bought it, so you know, sold a scene sort of thing, but uh, I spoke to the guy who used to drive it, and he said the crane just basically, the crane got wore up, and it was just cost too much to keep on top of all the inspections, he said, so we cut it up. He said, but the engine was, you know, a really good engine, so we kept the engine, and uh, they just literally cut it out of the, the frame. So it's got a twin disc drive unit on the back, um, so it's basically like a clutch, and that then, you know, you can stop drive and, and keep drive going. Had some sort of duplex drive chain system on there, multi-chain thing. Um, but we can say chains it if we want to. Uh, yeah, there you go. So, same old thing again. You've got your blower here, uh, the governor's there. What we're gonna have to do is take this rocker cover off, make sure the rack and all the injector uh, bits are free and uh, not stuck. And then we'll, Basically, stick a fuel can on the end of that down there, connect some pair of batteries up, and see if we can uh, get her to cheech to life, so we can get a tune out of her. But yeah, that's what I wanted uh, for the 671 is this Detroit Diesel uh, Shroud and Rad. Because they all fit the same units, 371, 471, 671. The cooling pack for them all is the same as, as the 6. Uh, so. As far as the online shop goes, well, that's uh, up and running now, and uh, orders have started coming in, so thank you for that. Uh, and I'll keep you updated with what's going on with that as and when I uh, find out myself. But um, despite all the you know restrictions we're under at the moment, uh, we are getting allocated our number of like T-shirts and all that. Right then, look what's come in. So we've got the green Will It Start T-shirts already in, and the uh, Fud Weasel ones. So now they're in, we can uh, start getting them on the production to uh, get them all printed up for you. Mugs have just come in, stickers, they've just come in, and they'll be going out uh, tomorrow. Uh, T-shirts, we had some arrive this week, and they'll be straight into print, so they'll be out later on this week, and we keep rolling it out, and so you'll all be getting your stuff uh, like that. So that's good. Right, Massey, 165. Uh, I caught up with the Fud Weasel one evening this week, and uh, well, here's how that went. So it's fairly late at night, and we're up here. Um, it's all quite romantic with the candlelight. <laughs> we're just working in uh, well, with with work lights basically um, at the moment until we got some other stuff sorted here. But uh, yeah, so here's the Massey, um, which is a bit different when you probably last saw it. Quite different. Um, so yeah, the old Fud Weasel's been busy, and so what have you actually been doing? Well, we got the steering, find out why it had no steering. Oh yes, yes. That was full up to about there, with... That was terrible, wasn't it? Paste, sort of rusty like paste. Brown paste. <sighs> yeah. And ball bearings. Yeah. And when I got it out, I found it was a mixture going by taste. Mm -hmm. It was a mixture of EP90, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, looked like copper grease, yeah. and um, rainwater. Yeah, I think that's... But been in there for a while. Oh yeah, yeah. Had a bit yeah. of flavour. Yes. Which is good. Yeah. Um, right, okay, so that's good. So that's the steering, because just let people know, I don't know, <clears throat> when we um, unloaded this, and the, have we got the old steering wheel somewhere? Uh, it was a bit stiff on the old uh, steering wheel. And so, anyway, um, 
It's all right, we managed to lift it in with a telly hand and whatever. Um, I decided the next day that I wanted to move this further up here uh, in this shed so I could get, I think, a, uh, might be been it, moved the 8100. Anyway, regardless, um, I yanked on the steering wheel and it broke off. I mean, there is literally nothing here. Um, <coughs> Leaving that behind. Yeah, I left that bit in the, um, in the center. So yeah, that was all that was left. So that obviously used to go somewhere in there with some other bits and it no longer does it. But not to worry, because we'd already seen that and got a new steering wheel. Oh, Fred Weasel had got everything ordered by the time we'd got back here virtually. Um, so we thought, well, obviously there's something wrong with the steering. So steering wheel being here and down to there, there's the, where the box sat. So, all right, that had rusted through, fair enough, but that shouldn't have just broke off. Um, there was a lot, I mean, you could hardly turn this. I mean, just be honest, it was just, and you, all you could do, hence why it broke. So that was full of dunk. Um, and you've got your steering arm this side, and it's just there, moment. That goes there, and it goes down to here. Now, kingpins, what were they like? Kingpins actually aren't that bad. I've got the, I can do them. They're a bit on the stiff side. But you could do but them. I, I've got the, um, got the thrust bearings, got the bushes. So you can do those. I'll do those. You're going to do those anyway. regardless anyway. Because yeah. if not being funny, if you're going to start at the steering wheel and end up somewhere down here, you might as well just renew the steering, which is what you're going to do, aren't you? Yeah. Right, so, going to renew all that, so there we are. Now, you've got this, um, the other reason it's pretty bit stiff, this drop uh, arm here for the steering, and that goes in there and up into there, doesn't it? It goes straight to the top there. Yeah, right yeah. yeah. And then through there and then into there. Now, let's just have a little look at that one, and let's have a look at the new one we've got. So, there we are, Marcus. Now, I think you just want to see this bit here, just then work around so the same way. Do you see how, there's your splines, and this piece is of a larger diameter, then it drops down to a smaller diameter there. This one has worn so badly, there's the splines, it's of a smaller diameter, <laughs> and then raises up on this bit. I mean, overall, what? on earth that must have worn i mean in mill that's worn that's probably got to be what's that some that's 49 that is and right and this one is, is 47 so two mil that's actually worn yeah. two mil. and the other end as well and the same thing there Marcus. look look at that look so yeah just... oh, sorry yeah here like you can see yeah. how that one is obviously you know raised that's worn that not only just level that's eaten in you can see that there look so it must have been fun to drive well, it was. I broke the steering wheel. <laughs> so, so there we are. So that's where we're at. The one thing I noticed when we picked this up, the sail ground, we had a weepy core plug, and then when we ran it, there was another weep dropped down from here behind this start motor. So really, you want to get the start motor off? Yep. Okay. Right. That's oh, right. It's also start like. It's brand new. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. I mean, we knew that. I think from yeah. there, and you can see there's no wear on there. No, just, no there's nah, only the lead in on it. Yeah, so it's just, just a new starter in it. A little bit of wear on the leader. Nothing, I mean, you know, I mean, nothing. I'm just being really critical of it here. No. There seems to be some jollop. Let's just give that old rag a little pants, aren't they? They actually you are your pants, aren't they? It was the only piece of clothing I had that wasn't orange. I think that's probably just sweeping in that bottom there still. Mm. Now, one of the things I keep hearing on the channel a lot is about the old FUD weasel. People say, oh, you never show us the FUD weasel. We never get to see the FUD weasel. Well, to be honest, I don't know what the big attraction is. This is the original clutch pedal. Yeah. yeah a little bit worn there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the previous owner has stuffed a load of black insulated tape in there to that is the way forward the yeah and that'll, that'll quiet it down that is the uh, way forward that's jobs are good one. but that was like yeah yeah it's about a 30 quid repair and it would take him about an hour at the yeah. most but no it was easier to pop that off and stuff a lot of tape in there it was though wasn't it that's all he did it must have been yeah <laughs> right muckers so i'm a little bit different at the moment today uh as i'm going to be doing a box unopening 
Uh, and the thing is, it will become apparent to you what's in it and what it's about at exactly the same time as it becomes apparent to me. Right, here's the reason why. This has been sent to me by an old friend of mine, uh, Matt, and Matt is very well known in the world of AEC Matadors, which were primarily World War II um, artillery tractors. Then after the war, because they were such a reliable, versatile, you know, sort of stocky 4x4 uh, platform, they were used by oh, countless, uh, you know, councils, uh, haulage companies, bus companies, whatever, uh, fitted with wrecking and recovery jibs to bring in, you know, broken down trucks and buses. A lot of them were uh, converted into, you know, timber tractors. So they had a, a lot of jib put on the back so they could use their winch and haul timber up onto trailers and also just then cart the whole thing out of, you know, woods. As I said, that's what Matt uh, is involved in. But I first knew Matt, as I said, over 20 years ago, when he and I uh, were involved taking a, a traction engine by road from Bedfordshire to Cornwall. It took us two weeks. And that was like over 300 and, uh, 360 odd mile or something like that. And it was just full of trials and tribulations and oh, all sorts of things happened. It, it was both, you know, it was a, just a, an opportunity of a lifetime. Oh, hang on. Dear Lord Muck, I need some help. You certainly do with your writing. You write like a three-year-old. Um, I have an engine that just will not start regards Matt. Yeah, very good, Matt. Very good. Right, what have we got here? We've got... Only the face of mother... Bloody hell, that's me aged <laughs> about 27. That's in the back of Tom's Land Rover. That's on the trip. So this is what I was telling you about, the the trip where we took the traction engine to Cornwall. And this is me in Tom's old Series 3 long wheelbase. Oh, right, and there's a, a more of that later, anyway. Um, that's an AC, isn't it? That's a, a Matador engine on a frame. Oh, so that must be the engine he's referring to. Um, right, so he wants a... Right, well obviously I'll have to give him a call to see exactly what the hell he's on about. But that does look quite good. That is uh, an AEC Matador engine. Standard issue Haribo from Matador HQ as endorsed by TV's own Rory Wilcox. Now I'm sure a lot of you will already know that name. Uh, this is a joke Matt and Rory have between they ever set Matt sends parts to Rory or whatever. Rory Wilcox, you know, um, was the the recovery program. You know, Dave Crouch and then Trucking Hell. Well, Rory uh, is on uh, on that, as you might know well know. So uh, good old boy, gentleman, absolute gentleman, as is Dave. So I've got some uh, Haribo. The Matt is still trying to groom people with uh, sweets. Nothing changes. So this is the headlight of a frog-eyed Ford Scorpio. <laughs> right, the reason he sent me... <laughs> That's a boy's a prat. The reason he sent me this as a standard joke. We always said, because I'll put a picture of the frog-eyed Scorpio. And they had these massive lights. Well, they were in the day. They're quite the norm now. But they, you know, for the day, they had these massive lights. And we just sort of said, well, they're just asking, to, you know, to be smashed, aren't they? And, uh, yeah, it was this whole joke we had that you'd never find a... <laughs> you'd never find a second-hand light for a frog-eyed Scorpio. That engine, that's a Matador engine on a frame. It is, yes. Now, do you want to hear the story about it? Go on. Um, as you know, the Matador engine is famous for always starting. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't matter whether it's knackered, it's got no compression, It'll run. It's, minus, it's minus five outside, or it's not running years and years, it will always start. It will run, so, 
it all up. So that, um, so a customer of mine um, sent me a, a, a WhatsApp video of him trying to start that engine. Right. So he's put a new fuel pump on it, a recon fuel pump. He's put some recon injectors on it and it won't run. So I said, to him, well, the only reason it can't run is A, it's not getting diesel coming out of the injectors. Yeah. Or, or B, you've got the pump timing 180 degrees out. And even then, so, they'll get a noise out of one out of a Matador engine. Well, not very funny. Is, uh, once it's squirted enough diesel in, it'll eventually fire. It will, um, yeah. Even if it's 180 degrees. So I said to him, look, just check the pump timing. And then, um, if, you know, and I could see there was smoke coming out the exhaust. I, I kind of guessed it was, it was trying to fire a bit of diesel in. Yep. And I said, well, the best thing you can do is ship the engine down. Yep. I'll put it in my test frame and um, and go from there. So it came down last week. I saw week your I... test frame. Where are you sleeping at the moment? <laughs> in a <the> shed. <laughs> and I, we've got a Matador engine that won't run. Amazing. And I've got yeah. no idea why. Uh, yeah. Um, well, they... well, they ain't seeing it, Matt. It's hard to sort of diagnose anything. Um, it's a first for me. Yeah, it's a first for me not to, you know, see one in the run. Oh, well, the best thing we can do, I suppose, is come and have a look. Well, if you wouldn't mind, and uh, well, it'd just be nice to get to the bottom of it because I can't see it well, why it won't run. All right, all right, well, uh, all right, I'll, uh, I'll sort something out, I'll come down. Am I bringing biscuits? Uh, well, as you're coming to me, I ought to supply something, so it might be just packet Harry bows. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, you aren't using them now, all the schools are closed. Right, <laughs> I'll, um, all right, mate. All right. Take care. Speak to you later. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. So, Another week done, muckers. And uh, yeah, until the next one, do well. <laughs>